Hi, I'm Rachel with ID8 TV, and I'm here with Alexander Bokeri, the director of Shaka, A Story of Aloha. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Alexander, so first, can you tell us how you got involved with the project? Absolutely. Uh, Steve Su, the producer, uh, was working out in Laie, uh, where the story is set, and he met some people that uh, knew about the Shaka, knew where it came from, and he started investigating a bit. And then a couple years into his process, he needed a director who had done maybe some larger projects because he wanted to make it bigger. And at the time, I had just finished a feature film, and I had a short film that was playing here, actually, at LA Asian Pacific Film Festival, like four years ago. And through that, um, he saw my work and then just invited me to come on. And as soon as I heard the origin of the Shaka and what it really meant, where it really came from, I was like, I have to be a part of this. Yes, I love it. Do you, does the Shaka have any, um, I guess, what role has the Shaka played in your life or has it played any? No, absolutely. When it, it really is an identity marker for Hawaii, uh, among many other things. But for me, you know, as a native Hawaiian who was born in diaspora and then moved to Hawaii as a teenager, you know, to be able to take this piece of me with me whenever I left the islands and see it in every photo, in every you know family gathering, church gathering, wherever it was, it just was like this, like you belong, you you're welcome here, and in this like physical manifestation of it, not just from people's words. So I always loved that aspect of it. And if you come to Hawaii, um, even if you're not native Hawaiian or anything, if you're in a photo, there's always going to be the normal photo, and then people are like, okay, now throw shaka, and you get the second photo too, and just having that extra element of um, just community and have a symbol be of that community. It just, um, it's always been so special to me. I love that. Yeah, I actually have a photo in my home where my, we went on a trip to Hawaii when I was young. And of course, of course, of course yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you said you've, is this your first non-narrative project? Uh, or non-scripted? Non-scripted, no, I've done, a, I've done quite a bit of documentary work, okay. uh, mostly shorts. I've done, um, and in back home, I, uh, I have a freelance, I'm, I freelance as a director and I have a production company and we've produced, um, I've done two other feature length documentaries and a bunch of short form stuff uh, for Hawaii Visitors Bureau and a, and a bunch of other organizations. So I try to do narrative work and that's what I'd like to do, but there's a lot of opportunities for documentaries. And there's also just so many cool, interesting stories that I find myself um, just digging into and I can't help myself, I start filming things and I make films that way. I, uh, so, you know, with Shaka, there's so many twists and turns as to where it actually originated from. For you personally, what were some of the more surprising elements? Oh, that's, uh, that's a good question because, um, it's, okay, <laughs> in the movie, um, we make it uh, clear that, or we, we make it seem like Nobody knew anything, but as far back as I can remember, I remember someone telling me, you know, it's a, this guy had his fingers cut off and he would wave at people and then everyone copied him. Like that's been like urban legend for as long as I can remember. Um, and you know, it's some people like thinking about like, oh, it's just like a surf thing, but it's like, where did it come from there? And so the, the losing fingers thing always made sense to me, but I just never dug that deep. And the craziest part to me, is the man who lost his three fingers, who is the inspiration for the Shaka. There's a statue of him out in Laie, and it's been there since the 90s. And I walked by it probably a hundred times and never, <laughs> never made the connection until we started making this movie. And, and that's when, you know, I was like, oh, that's it? Oh, okay, we got, we got to let people know. Okay. And, and so we just went from there. So then, what has been your family and community reaction to this movie? Well, this is a world premiere. I actually haven't shown it to a lot of my family yet, so I'm excited for them to see it. But we have been showing it throughout the community to get feedback, especially the community that is mostly featured here. And like, yeah, we've shown it a few times. And it's just been honestly overwhelming how positive and how grateful and um, just just the, the joy that I've seen from showing this movie and, and their, from their reactions has just been so fulfilling and honestly just made this entire thing worth it. And, and you know, indie film, indie documentary in particular where, you know, it's just spread out over so many months and you're trying to just work with people when they have free time. It, it, 
it can get difficult sometimes, but honestly, showing it to the community that it, the film is about and having the reaction be super positive was just, it made it all worth it. Yeah, it, it must be so fulfilling. As a, um, well, is there anything final you'd like to say about Shaka? Um, no, I just, I just hope people find the movie and, and realize that you don't have to be from Hawaii, you don't have a connection to Hawaii. To throw a Shaka, you know, you can just throw a Shaka and connect and, and say what's up and say I see you and, and just there's no reason we can't be spreading more joy wherever you're from. Beautiful. Do you want to throw a Shaka?